Live from Case at 12. The 6 o'clock news starts right now. After a wet and cold morning on slick roads, we got a bit of a break from the rain, but not the cold. And don't be fooled by the drying out. We are expecting even more rain tonight and near freezing or freezing temperatures in some spots. Adam Kasky here with a first look at your forecast. Adam. And yeah, we're seeing a bit of a break in the action right now. You saw the low clouds, but good visibility actually. That's going to be changing later tonight, especially after midnight. That's closer to 2 a.m. is when I expect the rain to really start picking up and freezing rain. Look across the area right now on radar. Nothing. We just have the low clouds. Of course, uh, temperatures are critical in this situation. It's basically everything, especially as the rain starts to move into town. And you look at the current numbers, and for the most part, we're at or below freezing once you get up into the hill country. Locally, we're just above freezing. 33 at the airport right now, 32 in Converse at Randolph. Uh, Stinson measuring 35. But you get to Bulverde, 29 degrees. Bernie, 30. Comfort, 29. That's going to help cool the roadways, especially as the sun sets. Because even through the clouds, you get some energy from that sun that prevents those surface roads from uh, really cooling off as quickly. But the road temperatures are critical as well. We'll take a look at the road temperatures. And for the most part, they're a little above freezing, especially locally. Locally, I mean, we can get really tight here into San Antonio. We'll get around uh, the airport and even Alamo Heights area. And you look at the road temperature, 39 degrees, 1604 and 281, 37 degrees, even up toward Dominion, 35 degrees for the road temperatures. We get into the hill country and we're starting to see this blue line creep a little farther to the south. We're talking 33 degrees around Smithson Valley for road temperatures and even Canyon Lake and even a little bit cooler on some elevated surfaces. 34 degree road temperatures as we get up into Kendall and Kerr County. But this is where the air temperature has been cold enough so the elevated surfaces have been getting the icing. I mean, we're talking street signs, uh, trees, fences, uh, vehicles that have been parked outside. And actually, our Sarah Spivey is smack dab between Comfort and Fredericksburg right now, right here on the map. Oh, there's a good example of it, Sarah. Tell us what you're seeing out there. We are seeing a lot of ice on elevated surfaces like you were talking about. I mean, if you take a look around here, this is US 87. We're, we're safely at a distance from there, but you can see all of the ice. Everything you see that is white is ice, and this is what it looked like earlier. You can see there's tons of ice on trees uh, out, out here. In fact, there's uh, somewhere along the lines of a six tenths of an inch of ice on trees, weighing them down. And unfortunately, that means that we're going to be seeing those trees weighed down, power lines weighed down, which means power outages. Earlier today, there were already power outages reported out in Gillespie County. But here's the good news. TxDOT has been out here. In fact, we ran into them uh, going, treating the roads here, treating US 87. Uh, and we didn't have any issues coming up here on the roads, which is good news, but that is unfortunately going to change tomorrow. Again, we don't really anticipate any additional freezing rain until after midnight tonight. So unfortunately, the situation here is just going to get worse, though, tomorrow during the day. Now back here uh, in the hill country, uh, and across parts of, of North San Antonio, I want to show you the proper way how to measure ice. Take a look at this fence right here. This is a lot of ice along this fence. Now, the way to measure ice is you've got to add both sides and divide it by two. So take a look at this. So there's nothing on this side, so we're adding zero on this side, all right? But on, on the uh, left side of this, it's about 1.2 inches. So you're gonna take that total, which is 1.2 inches, and you're gonna divide it by two. So it comes out to about 6 tenths of an inch of ice accumulation. That's how you properly measure ice. I want you to snap a picture of anything that you see at your place, and I want you to post it on the KSAC Connect feature on our weather app because eyes and ears on the ground is the best way to verify a forecast, helps us know what's going on in your neighborhood. You can get to that KSAC Connect feature through our weather app, your weather authority app. It's amazing. Please consider downloading it because not only can you post pictures, but you also get notifications right to your phone. We go live right to your phone 
to give you a forecast that is tailored by meteorologists and not computer generated. So consider downloading that KSAT Weather Authority app. We're going to be here in the Hill Country throughout the day tomorrow. The next time you'll see me is on GMSA. We'll be out here keeping track of things as conditions will worsen tomorrow. Reporting between Comfort and Fredericksburg, I'm meteorologist Sarah Spivey. Back to you. All right, Sarah, you and photographer Billy out there stay safe, get somewhere warm. All right, let's talk about what happened in Bernie earlier today. A police officer left with some bumps and bruises after a crash on I-10 this morning. City officials say that officer was sitting in this patrol unit when another vehicle slammed into it after that driver lost control on some ice. The officer was helping out another driver at the time. The crash did some serious damage, as you can see, to both vehicles. The the officer was taken to the emergency room, but has since been released and up the highway from Bernie along I 10 in Kerr County and beyond the roads are even more treacherous. An example of that this accident along I 10 involving 18 several 18 wheelers. The one near the Kimball and Kerr County lines in the westbound lanes. No word on whether anyone was seriously injured. Traffic was backed up for quite a while while, while crews worked on the scene and slick roads taking out this car hauler a little closer to Kerrville, sending it sliding into a median where it flipped on its side. Emergency personnel spending their morning responding to numerous accidents along I-10, posting updates and pictures of crash scenes to illustrate slick and dangerous just how it was out there. And here in San Antonio, first responders as well with a busy morning responding to several crashes on the northeast side thanks to ice on elevated roads. One of the first roads shut down was Judson Road over Lookout Drive. Not far from there, though, another accident along Loop 1604 near Rolling Oaks Mall. That one involved as many as 10 cars and trucks. Another road shut down after a crash because ice on a bridge at North Wiener and O'Connor Road. Let's check out the road conditions right now, and I believe this is along I-10 and Kerrville. I think it's mile marker 551, and thankfully there's not a lot of people on the roads. It's really kind of hard to tell what the road conditions are right now, but they can be deceptive, especially as we start getting towards that 32 degrees. And if we're at 32 right now in San Antonio, it's going to be colder than that in Kerrville. Yeah, just a few cars out there. That is a good thing. And as we've been hearing, if you don't have to go anywhere, best to stay home. Icy roads, of course, this morning's big concern, but they could be tomorrow's as well. We are looking at cold and wet conditions again overnight. Gary Berger talked with TxDOT and County Public Works about what they're doing to prepare. Garrett joins us live from the north side. Garrett. Yeah, the county actually just finished de-icing this bridge right behind me on Evans Road. This is an area which has a it's a nice long span of bridge. You can actually see the tracks of the de-icing agent that they put down in each of the four lanes. They drove off right before our live shot, unfortunately. But these guys are going to be around. They're working around the clock. Uh, a public works official told us they expect that until at least tomorrow night. Now the county crew started working at five this morning, most of it on bridges in the north side of the county. County using both small gravel and a new de-icing agent that's using on a wide scale for the first time. That's actually a mix of brine and beet juice, which according to the manufacturer makes it less corrosive and reduces the salt application rate. At this point, they're just trying to stay ahead of the ice. So what the crews are doing right now is they're going out and pre-treating areas that we know are probably going to ice over again. So we have crews uh, out in the field and crews here on standby that are ready with barricades or signage that needs to go out. That way we can close off the roads and keep everybody safe. Now TxDOT has had crews out since yesterday treating the highways. Today they're focusing their efforts on the highways north of the airport and not only the bridges and overpass, though those do get special attention as those do freeze first. Spokeswoman told us earlier today they plan to keep going until the temperatures are above freezing and there's no chance of rain. Now, TxDOT had also put out some tips for driving in wintry weather and the icy conditions like that. If you're not used to it, I am I'm from up north, can vouch for this. Get, leave some extra space between the car in front of you. Also, don't rely on your cruise control. You really want to be able to react to the conditions on the road and it's not the getting going that's going to be the trouble, it's the stopping. And look out for these crews as they're clearing the way for you and trying to keep those roads safe.
Live in North Bear County, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. All right, Garrett, you guys stay safe out there as well. Winter weather in other parts of Texas, leaving some passengers stranded at San Antonio International Airport. There were more than 70 flights canceled or delayed today. Our RJ Marquez joins us live from the airport this evening. So RJ, how are things out there at this point? No, we could do that anyway. Yeah, Myra, you just talked about those numbers right there, and that actually just jumped within the past 30 minutes or so. So we are still seeing an increase in some of these delays and cancellations as passengers make their way out tonight. Now, many people learned early this morning or late last night that their that their flights were delayed or canceled. They were going to have to figure out some new accommodations, make some different plans, maybe even spend the night here in San Antonio. A couple told us earlier today that their flight was actually diverted while they were in the air. They were headed from Tucson to Dallas, but they had to make a stop right here in San Antonio because of ice in the North Texas area. Now, airport officials say that weather in North Texas caused several diversions right here in San Antonio, but operations were smooth for the most part, but airlines like Southwest and American, of course, were forced to reschedule flights that were not able to make it out of the Dallas area to San Antonio. The website FlightAware reports there were 34 cancellations and 44 total delays here at San Antonio International Airport making it a very long day for some flyers. My flight uh, from San Antonio to DFW was canceled yesterday and I'm rebooked uh, at 6 o'clock tonight. And every, they were super great, super accommodating, but and I don't get too worked up about it, but it's what it is. And so I get to get home tonight around midnight. And we just checked and that gentleman's flight right there, right there has been actually delayed by another few hours. So it's again going to be a very, very long trip back home for him. Now things are bad here, but up the road an I-35 at Oxton Bergstrom, a lot worse. There were 280 cancellations there and at least 70 delays. So things up the road a lot worse. Of course, airport officials here saying that you should check with the airline first before you head out to the airport, if that is at all possible. Reporting live from San Antonio International Airport. Airport, RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, RJ. Now, schools of all levels planning for some nasty weather tomorrow morning with some delays and outright cancellations. Some have already made the announcement. You can scan the QR code on the screen. It's going to take you to a living list on our website. We're running a ticker with that information as well as the bottom of the screen, as you see. Both are being updated as new closures and delays come in. San Antonio fire investigators are looking into the cause of an early morning fire at a vacant home on the west side. Fire crews responded to the 3400 block of El Paso a little after two when they found flames on the front and the inside of a home there. It took them about 10 minutes or so to get this fire under control and no one was hurt. Fire crews told us this fire was likely started by people trying to stay warm. Now, city warming shelters are not open right now. They're not open tonight. There are still shelters open, though, for San Antonio's unsheltered population. Lee Waldman is live at the church under the bridge. Lee, hot meals just started being served, and I imagine that's probably a very popular item tonight. Very, very popular item. Uh, people are getting those hot meals just behind me here. But just before we came to check in with y'all, someone was actually being taken out on a stretcher. We we're told that their feet were turning purple due to the exposure. It's so cold out here for people who are who are unsheltered during these cold temperatures. Now, six to seven is when they're serving those hot meals at seven o'clock. This place is going to open up for a warm place for people to stay here at the church under the bridge. Now, for people who don't want to go to a shelter tonight. Valerie Salas with Christian Assistance Ministries or CAM is working to deliver blankets and hand warmers. Her team is also transporting people back and forth to shelters if they can't get there on their own. She says they work closely with San Antonio police downtown, making sure that officers have warming supplies to hand out as well. That's a huge vital relationship we have. Um, they know our clients out there. They're very familiar with them. They know who will come in, who won't. So they're like, we've got Daniel on the corner over here. He's not going to come in. Can you come make sure he has the warm supplies that he needs, things like that. Um, and then through the night, we hit the night shift last night. Um, so their night shift had a bunch of supplies. And by this morning, they were already out. 
Here at Club, we said that at 7 o'clock, they're going to start registering people inside to stay inside of their sanctuary. That can hold anywhere from 60 to 90 people. And uh, I was speaking with the director here. She imagines that they'll hit that 60 mark pretty early on. Now, coming up tonight on the Night Beat, we're going to show you how all of these different organizations are working together to help our city's unhoused population. Live downtown, Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. All right, thanks, Lee. Let's take a look outside right now. A break in the rain. We're expecting more, though, and that big potential for ice, especially to our north. Adam Kasky times it all out for us up next. Deteriorating weather and potentially dangerous conditions on the roads tonight on the night feed. We are continuing to cover all of that. The situation some drivers could face and what you can do if you find yourself stranded in this weather. It's on the night beat attack. Yeah, roads really are the big concern with all of this. So let's get to Adam Kasky. And Adam, it sounds like, is it overnight tonight, really tomorrow morning? That's the most significant problem that we could potentially deal with? Yeah, especially while we're sleeping tonight. I think by 2 a.m. is when things are really going to start picking up. So I plan to still be here in the studio ready to hop on air and especially on our KSAT Weather Authority app when necessary to keep you updated. But the heaviest rain will likely pick back up again by 2 a.m. So if you need to run to the store or do something right now, it's fine right now. It's going to be for several more hours. It's later on tonight and tomorrow morning. We'll have the issues icing, especially along and north of 410. And the highest impact will be in the hill country where power outages are likely. Speaking of outages, we've already seen some out there, not just in the hill country, but other parts of Texas. Uh, for example, you get to Smith County here. This is home to Tyler, Texas. 10,000 outages reported. Neighboring County to the West, 7,500 power outages reported. That's off to the Northeast of us, but even Travis, Travis County and Gillespie counties have outages as well. You get around Austin, 300 outages, Gillespie County right now, 200 power outages at the moment. Uh, that's down from a higher amount, I believe 400 earlier today, but you look at the radar. It's very, very quiet. Not a lot to talk about right now. We have a little break in the action at the moment. That's however going to be changing in the hours ahead. Speaking of changing, let's talk about how much freezing rain we'll see and when here. I'm going to get rid of this title bar and notice over the next several hours, six, seven, eight, nine, ten o'clock, you don't see the numbers really rising or populating, but after 2 a.m., that's when we should start adding to these freezing rain accumulations. And keep in mind, this is just one high resolution computer model that we have in house. And I do think it under, uh, underestimates the accumulation uh, just a little bit, but it does show the focus being up into the hill country. And of course, this will keep updating uh, throughout the evening. And I'll bring it to you uh, the latest on the night beat at 10. So why the freezing rain? That's another question. You know, what's the deal? It's raining and then it turns into ice when it hits the ground. Well, this is what we're dealing with. Up above us, we're talking about five, 6,000 feet above us. We have this really warm air that's actually 50 degrees. It's 50 degrees above us, but from about 2,000 feet all the way down to the ground. So ground to 2,000 feet, it's below freezing in spots and it will be. If it's not now, it will be in many locations overnight tonight. So that liquid rain, it's warm, it's 50 degrees falls through this really shallow layer of cold air, too shallow to allow it to turn into an ice pellet. But once it hits the ground or an elevated surface, an exposed surface, boom, turns right into ice and becomes slick. So that's what we're dealing with out there right now. Uh, you know what? I tell you what, next half hour, we'll get into the explanation of the bridges and overpasses and the kind of impact uh, that has and why they freeze first. But right now, let's move on with the forecast here. Let's talk about the impacts and notice north of Highway 90 is where we'll see most of the activity. But the major impact hill country up to three quarters of an inch of ice accumulation and that's going to lead to more power outages, highly likely to travel not recommended. That includes just north of Bernie, Sisterdale, Canyon Lake area, Smithson Valley, right on the edge of that Fredericksburg, Harper, Kerrville, go farther to the south, including Fair Oaks Ranch, Bull Verde, Garden Ridge, New Braunfels, Green, Stone Oak, Medina Lake. So this is north of 1604 all the way up to about the Guadalupe River. That's where we'll have the moderate impact. I see elevated surfaces, exposed surfaces, fences, some tree branches, vehicles that are parked out overnight, and some surface roads could become slick as well. 
travel troubles and some isolated power outages possible. Then we get closer to downtown. We're talking 410 Hollywood Park, Shavano Park, Castle Hill, SeaWorld, Alamo Ranch, Converse, about China Grove, even downtown more minor impacts, so mainly just some elevated surfaces and some bridges and overpasses that aren't treated as well and are less traveled could become problematic. Here's our future cast and remember that 2 a.m. number. Here we go. See how even it's showing the activity starting to intensify 2 a.m. and thereafter, and that could lead to some of this ice piling up pretty quickly. So this purple area indicating where we will likely have the freezing rain. Notice that's northern Bear County and especially into the hill country, but some pockets of it here and there on the elevated surfaces, even around downtown area. This all comes to an end pretty gradually by tomorrow evening, and then it's done by Thursday. We're going to talk the importance of the temperature and the dew point and the difference between them coming up next half hour tomorrow, 32 in the morning. 34 for the high temperature, freezing rain turning to just rain by about 10 a.m. And then Thursday we start to clear out. We're at 47 degrees. The threat of freezing rain ends by midday tomorrow for us and uh, tomorrow evening for the hill country. Then back to sunny and 60 by Friday in this weekend. All right, thank you, Adam. I want to talk about an alert that was sent out by KSAT.com moments ago that uh, due to hazardous winter weather conditions, HEB closing down some of their stores in the Hill Country. Closing at 9 o'clock tonight and reopening at 8 a.m. Wednesday, Kerrville, all stores, Fredericksburg, Bernie, and Bulverde. The following stores in Central Texas are closing at 6 p.m., so they've already closed tonight. They're going to reopen at 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. That's Buda, Kyle Plus, San Marcos All Stores and Wimberley. Those are the AGB stores that are closing early tonight. And we got a rundown of all of that information on KSAT.com. Meantime, SAFC opened up training camp and we were there. Sports is coming up next. Despite the cold temperatures, San Antonio FC still opened up training camp today and hit the pitch for practice. I would expect nothing less from the mentality monsters. Today was the first on-field training for the reigning USL championship title holders. They topped Louisville FC back in November 3-1 to to win their first ever USL championship. So how did the champs feel about opening camp in the cold? This is my type of weather. This is Pennsylvania weather right here. Uh, not classic San Antonio weather. So uh, I'm thriving in it right now. And Probably so is my dog. It is what it is. You just got to roll with the punches, and that's being a mentality monster. You got to take take what life gives you and, and make the best out of it, and I think that's what we did today. The training camp will run until the regular season begins on March 11th. Spurs rookie forward Jeremy Sohan was selected to the 2023 Rising Stars roster today. The 19-year-old is averaging 10.1 points, 4.9 rebounds, and 2.5 and assists in 26.1 minutes in 44 games while making 41 starts. He's currently the first Spurs rookie since Tim Duncan in 1997-98 to average at least 10 points per game. The Rising Stars contest will be held Friday, February 17th in Salt Lake City as part of NBA All-Star Weekend. The dynamic duo of Ashton and Aaron DuBose are taking their skills to West Texas A&M to play college football for the Buffaloes. The Twins were star players at Brennan High School, helping the Bears go 12-2 overall this season and advancing to the Class 6A Division I Regional Finals. Ashton plays quarterback and Aaron wide receiver. Now they'll get to play football at the next level, just like they did in high school. It was just because, like, we wanted – so we always wanted to go to college with each other since we were little, and we got the opportunity to play at West Texas, and we wanted to go together, so that's what we did. It's special because normally we'll separate and go our different ways, but now we want to stick together because at least we'll have somebody whenever we go off to college. The twins plan to sign their national letter of intent tomorrow at home since school is closed. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The Houston Texans have hired San Francisco 49ers defensive coordinator D'Amico Ryans as their next head coach. The team announced at 4:15 this afternoon. They agreed to a reported six-year contract. Ryans first met with the Texans on January 20th, and then again on Tuesday following the Niners' loss to the Eagles in the NFC Championship game. Ryans, a former Texan standout linebacker, will be the fourth coach in Houston in four years, and Houston becomes the first NFL team to hire three straight black head coaches. And ESP 
ESPN is reporting that the Broncos have agreed to a trade with the Saints to hire Sean Payton as their next head coach because Payton had signed an extension in 2019 that was set to run through the 2024 season. The Saints and Broncos had to negotiate compensation for Denver to sign Payton as their head coach. And I wonder if Mike McCarthy up in Dallas is breathing a sigh of relief. <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking, Larry. I was yes. like, hmm, I know mm. one guy who's probably happy with that. News. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Larry. Our KSAP Q&A is up next. It is cold out there and a lot of people wondering about school closures, road closures. What are the road conditions? We're joined by San Antonio Mayor Ron Nuremberg on this Tuesday. Mr. Mayor, thank you for joining us. I see you're warm at your house. I'm very happy to see that. <laughs> Talk about the road conditions and how closely you're monitoring what's happening on our roadways right now and the areas of concern for you. Well, yes, usually during a winter event like this in our area, it's about road conditions. That's the number one concern. And so that is a, you know what we're watching very closely right now. We're kind of teetering on the edge of the freezing level. So the farther north you go, especially past 1604 overpasses become an issue so we're asking people to take precautions uh, in those areas there are some de-icing agents that have already been applied uh, tech has been out for quite a while now uh, dealing with those issues uh, don't uh, we're not anticipating them to become severe issues in town uh, but again farther north you go the lower the temperatures get overnight we could see some icing so please be careful on the roadways out there let's talk about power you know obviously right now we haven't had too many issues thankfully throughout the day today but really ice tonight tomorrow morning is the big concern there so yeah. what are you hearing from cps energy in terms of how we're doing right now or their estimates for what this energy load is going to look like for us over the next couple of days Sure. Well, CPS Energy is, is doing fine in terms of energy generation meeting uh, cap capacity meeting demand. We are told ERCOT is in the same uh, state, so they are meeting supply. Uh, we do expect a little bit of peak demand coming this evening, uh, but ERCOT is, is anticipating no issues on the grid. That said, the farther north you go, like into North Texas, all part of the Texas energy grid, we're, we're anticipating icing on trees like in the north texas you're probably already seeing uh, pictures from the dallas fort worth area those could potentially be impacts when you start getting branches falling off and impacting power lines all that being said though ERCOT is not expecting any issues on the grid itself but um you know so we're we're knocking on wood and hoping that remains the case through our state partners talk a bit about a little bit about the guidelines of when you can and cannot open up a warming center and and kind of what sure. your thoughts are when it comes to that and is it your call so well this is part of an administrative directive this is uh, the resiliency hubs now have been part of our uh, seasons now for about a couple of years i guess if you include the pilots uh, the resiliency hubs are a little different than shelters. So always during a weather event, we are doing outreach to uh, the homeless population here in San Antonio. That is happening as we speak to get folks into shelter. So no one should be sleeping out in the elements. Um, and in the event they refuse to come into shelter, they are provided blankets and, and warm clothing, et cetera. The resiliency hubs are a little bit different. We do open those. Uh, when the temperature gets below freezing for an extended period of time, because uh, in that case, we're also looking at potential um, disruptions with regard to people's, um, you know, heating capacity and things like that. So those will open. We did open them during the Christmas break when we had a, a period of time where we were into the 20s for uh, a couple of days. Um, and even in that case, though, we saw, I think, a total of 12 people over the couple of days that the resiliency hubs were open. But again, to be to emphasize, uh, we do have shelters open. We're working through our nonprofit partners. Uh, we're doing outreach directly with uh, members of our community that are homeless, trying to get them into those shelters. If you encounter someone who needs assistance for or a shelter, you can uh, call 210-207-1799. No one should be out in the elements this evening. There are resources available to help. So there, so we're talking about more than just the normal shelters out there, more than just what we have at CAM and Haven for Hope and things like that. 
Yeah, well, so CAM, Haven for Hope, uh, Corazon Ministries, our nonprofit partners are opening uh, space available for people to come in and, and sleep and, and, and be able to be outside, out of the elements, uh, also being given food and, and things that they will need to, to make it through a, a cold evening. So those resources are available. The resiliency hubs are open when the weather gets below freezing for extended period of time. When and if they are needed, we will open those. Those are on standby. Uh, but at this time, we have shelters available for folks so they don't have to be out there in the elements overnight, uh, regardless of whether or not it gets below freezing. Those will be those are available through our nonprofit partners. Do you have? Sorry, my read. It's, that's all right. Each one of the council districts, they have their own homeless outreach coordinator. So yeah. have they been yeah. going out to try to get these folks who may be unsheltered into some of these shelters operated with by these nonprofit partners of the city? Absolutely. And that happens well before the temperature gets below gets to uh, the, you know, below freezing or even close to freezing. They've been out there for several days and in, in anticipation of this cold snap. And so we wanna make sure that everybody knows resources are available and, and we can get them transported if they need to one of those shelters. And again, if you are, you know, encounter anyone who needs assistance with regard to shelter, there is a hotline open, a 210-207-1799. We wanna make, again, make sure that folks are safe uh, as these uh, as the temperatures drop. Right. There is space out there. Mayor Ron Nuremberg, appreciate your time as always. Thank you. Stay warm. Yeah, you too. We'll be right back.